on the moon when I was 10, we kind of need to start by going back to when I was six or so. You see, there's no way to understand the moon landing unless you can understand cap guns. Going to the moon is a practical engineering challenge. And back before we had microchips and everything, everyone, especially toy manufacturers, had to do some practical engineering. So what do you do when you would really like your cowboy pistol to go bang? Now remember, we're not talking about Red Dead Redemption here. We're not talking about a game engine. We're not talking about particle systems. We're not talking about sound effects. This was something that we could hold in our hands, run around with, pull a trigger, have a nice bang, and some smoke as well. So forget about going to the moon. How do you solve that problem? Cap gun, Scooter. We all had cap guns. And by the way, a cap gun is absolutely awesome. We had these chrome six shooters, cowboy guns, Colt revolvers, you know. And when you pull the trigger, that gun should make some kind of noise. So they invented something called caps, which is where the phrase bust a cap on somebody comes from. Caps were little tiny bubbles of real gunpowder laid down on a thin roll of red paper and there were holes on each side of the strip. You take a tightly wound cap strip and you put it in the handle of the pistol and you kind of feed the paper strip up where these little hooks would grab a hold of the holes. You pulled the trigger, the hammer would come back on the gun and then hit this tiny little bump of gunpowder and it would go bang. It has exclusive fanning action and shoots safe shooting shells with greeny stickum caps. So for millions of us, the very end of the baby boom tale, our early childhoods pretty much smelled like gunpowder. Our yards were littered with shreds of red strips of paper. We were a lot closer to the Darwin Award finals than kids are today. For instance, it was discovered, not by me, of course, but by a friend of mine, that if you took an entire roll of, say, 30 caps and you put them down on the concrete, you hit them really hard with a hammer, a real hammer, you would get a hell of a loud noise, and the hammer would fly up into the air as well, and all the smoke. That's the reason why we were able to go to the moon in the 1960s because our dads were the kind of guys that would let their five-year-old sons smash rolls of gunpowder with a claw hammer. Our whole existence was IRL in real life. That's all we had to work with. Now, that may all sound trivial, but it's not. Back in the 60s and the 70s, we touched things. You put a ruler in sideways into the pocket clip of a ballpoint pen, now all of a sudden you've got a hypersonic space plane with a retractable crew section in the nose. We didn't have any digital world to retreat into, so we retreated into our own imaginations. Oh, and toys. Lots of amazing toys. The golden age of toys. Our collective parents had collective real money. American middle class money, you know, post-war big dog made in America money. And a lot of that disposable income ended up in the hands of companies named Hasbro and Topper and especially Mattel. All of Mattel's shoot and shell fanners and holsters carry the true stamp of the Old West. I grew up during that one brief shining moment that followed generations of, you know, kind of lame things like spinning tops and wooden train sets and came before generations of video game consoles and smartphone apps. I remember getting a G.I. Joe, one of the big ones, by the way, the real ones, about a foot tall. And if you had the patience that comes with difficulty to small boys, you could eventually work G.I. Joe's arms and legs into a one-piece silver spacesuit, put on the helmet, lower the visor, and put him into a wicked cool Mercury capsule. Came with flexible plastic record of John Glenn's orbital flight in Friendship 7. And from that instant, known space extended to the edge of the neighborhood. And any flat surface was not just suitable, but actually begging for a fiery descent, followed by a long exploration. Look, I don't mean to brag or anything, but I feel like I should point out at this time, I was also a fully certified high altitude balloon radar operator, and I was damn proud of it too. Go into any mall today, and there's usually some place called Brainiac Brian's Super Science Learning Laboratory, 